is a simple diagram of how a motor works. What we've got at the bottom left is a cell carrying a current around the circuit like this. Once it goes around the loop, it comes back this way. And then you've got a magnet with a magnetic field going from north to south like this. Now, if because of the uh, current carrying wires inside the magnetic field, they'll experience a force. If, so if you apply Fleming's left hand rule, you've got a current going this way here, got a field going this way. So that will experience a force downwards. Now if I do the exact same thing on the other side, what you'll find is that the force is going upwards now on this side. There's no force on this section of the wire. That's because it's parallel to the field, so there's no force on it. So as you can see, this is going to create a couple which has a turning effect, which will cause it to turn around like this. There's a potential problem with this, which is that when the current carrying wire, which is carrying current this way, after half a turn, it will be on the other side, carrying current in this, this direction. So if it was carrying current in this direction, the force actually be upwards again. So now this wouldn't do a complete cycle, just flip back and forth instead of doing a full rotation. To avoid this problem, we have something called a split ring commutator and the metal brushes, which are here. So what these do is every half a turn, it will switch polarity so that it makes sure that the current is always going around in this direction. So the forces are always in the direction that's shown and it carries on spinning in this direction. This is a diagram of a speaker. So you've got this diaphragm, which is basically the fabric. And then you've got a magnet here with a coil uh, of wire that's going around it. Now the current going through the coil is an a, AC current, which means that it's constantly changing direction. So next minute it will be going the other way. This is important. So for example, in this case, we've got a cross section of the, of the speaker and you've got current going into the page here and out this way. So in this case, if you apply Fleming's left hand rule with the field going this way here and the field going this way over here, then you'll find that the, this section of the, of the diaphragm will experience a force. We've got current going in and the field going up. It'll experience a force this direction here. And similarly on this side, we've got current going out of the page and field going down. So using Fleming left hand rule, we've got force going this way. So but any second later, what's going to happen is the current is going to change direction. So for example, like this. So in this case, the forces will change direction as well. Because the currents have changed direction, if you apply Fleming's left hand rule again, the force are going to be this way. So this causes the diaphragm to move back and forth. And the air molecules in front of the diaphragm Will also move back and forth. So this creates that longitudinal wave which transfers the energy in that direction creating sound.